think the big positive about us as a people, as Fijians, is, you know, obviously we, we get to gel quite quickly. You know, these boys are linked through their vanua. You know, you've got three confederacies, Tobata, Kumbu, Namur, Masanga. We try to make it quite clear in the, in the uh, environment. Uh, their linkages through, through their blood ties. You know, and that's, that's quite important. And us as a people, that's why it's quite special. Bulavinaka and welcome to Time Sports. Today we're here at uh, the Drua Base, the Swai Shipping Fijian Drua Base at uh, Langalanga in Nandi. And we are joined by a very special guest, uh, fitness guru, Mr. Nada Adawani Mbuka, who is behind uh, the success of uh, the Fiji Sevens team and now with the Drua and of course recently with uh, the Fiji Water Flying Fijians. And we'll get straight into it. Thank you so much, Mr. Nada, for joining us. Uh, just uh, firstly, maybe I'd like to know uh, the first thing you did when you arrived back to Fiji after such a long, a long time away from your family and uh, friends. Yeah, Vinak, it is good firstly to get back again after, you know, a, a number of weeks away from Fiji and, you know, a special thanks to uh, everyone who was there to greet the team, uh, government delegates, um, uh, members of, you know, Fiji Rugby Union trustees and, and board members and uh, leadership from the government and, uh, and the Vanua of uh, Nandi. Uh, and all the family and friends who came to uh, meet and greet the team. I know it was a special occasion. A lot of the players were uh, you know, overwhelmed and, and the staff as well by that special exp uh, experience. Eh? Mm -hmm. And uh, we really do appreciate just the support that we uh, were met with at the airport. Not only that, but also before, especially during the World Cup, you know, we felt uh, the support of the whole nation and all Fijians all over the world uh, who were right behind the team. And I could say that this World Cup was quite special for Fiji, uh, despite uh, the losses we did win some battles along the way. Just talk about the, the, that entire experience that you had with the, the Flying Fijians, uh, starting from that first day in uh, Welangi, that uni. Mm. Yes, it was uh, quite special. I think, um, you know, with, with the Flying Fijians this year, it was, uh, um, it was different. Uh, I think, you know, with, with Salmon coming on board, uh, just this year, you know, with the changes in the coaching staff, uh, you know, some new players coming into the Flying Fijians for the very first time. And the Flying Fijians actually, and it was Simon's call, you know, it was his thoughts um, to take the team up there uh, to Elangi and take the team back to the Vanua, back to really a village setting where a lot of the boys can reconnect to. Uh, some of the boys actually have never been in that setting before, uh, and that was a positive in itself that they could connect to what really, what it really meant to be a Fijian. Uh, to see uh, the, the lifestyle and just the community and uh, the communal feeling we have amongst ourselves as a, as a people uh, with our Vanua and our Vuvale. Uh, that was what the Welangi week brought out and you know there was in that special place in, the, in our, our garden island of Fiji there the team actually uh, you know put the foundations in place in terms of the values and the direction and the goal they wanted to achieve uh, led by the coaching staff and Simon and also senior players and the whole team uh, and and the team just ventured out from there i think that set up uh, what was to become a memorable uh, 14 15 week experience you know the campaign that, that finished a couple of weeks ago in uh, Masi. Uh, but you know it's been it's been a, a, a massive time period and a, and a window in in our history uh, especially with flying fijians if you look back during that time from july the first um, to our quarterfinal in Marseille, the team played 10 test matches. You know, they, they lost four. Uh, five of those test matches were against tier one nations. They won three of those five. And never in our history have we ever done that. And on the way, they were able to beat two former World Cup champions, England and Australia. So, you know, that, that gives a lot of belief um, uh, to, to, to the team, to the players, you know, uh, feedback to the coaching staff, that the planning and everything that was put in place, you know, there were some things that worked, some things that need tweaking, and obviously it set the foundation for the future years to come uh, for Flying Fijians. And what was it like uh, working alongside Simon? Because obviously he came in with uh, this new idea of uh, reconnecting to our people and understanding uh, who you were playing for, mm -hmm. and just sort of the influence he had on uh, the players themselves. I think it's different when you have a head coach who's won the jersey. You know, he's, he's probably, you know, one of the few head coaches uh, for Flying Fijians who has done that. Uh, well, we've had, you know, obviously Ili Tambua, uh, you know,
know, you had the great uh, Ratu Joe Sobao back in the day, you know, Sam Domoni, but also now Simon, uh, who played for Fiji, who knows what it's like, knows what it takes. And him coming in to the Flying Fiji's environment as head coach, I think, he, you know, that is, that is quite important. But also, not only that, he, he has obviously been part of the Fiji Rugby High Performance Unit for since 2020, 2019, 2020. So he knows a lot of the players and the inside outsides of Fiji rugby and our performance pathways. And even further to that, he's, he's been in France for a very long time. So, you know, for him to put together the team, the coaching staff, and, you know, laying out the plans together with the, the staff and and everyone involved, it, it, it set us up quite nicely, you know, and it was a different kind of World Cup prep. Uh, and also from a playing group perspective, very different to what we've had in the past. When the team first marched into camp, the players shared um, how they were trying to find that bond uh, between the European players and, of course, the rural players. And how did uh, you know the coach coaching panel uh, manage to sort of uh, bridge that gap that they had? Mm. And in, in what ways were you able to do that? I think the big positive about us as a people, as Fijians, is you know obviously we we get to gel quite quickly. You know these boys are linked through their vanua. You know, you've got the three confederacies, Tobata, Kumbuna, Murumbasana. We try and make it quite clear in the in the uh, environment, uh, their linkages through through their blood ties. You know, and that's that's quite important. And us as a people, that's why it's quite special, you know, being Fijian. Uh, it doesn't take much. But from a coaching perspective, you know, we've had coaches and, and staff uh, who are from the Ndrua anyway. Uh, and likewise with the players, so you know we work in the flying features environment. It's one big family. Uh, that's how we see it. You know, as much as I know there, there could be you know communication where there's bro players, there's northern players. There's nothing like that. Once you get into the flying features, it's all a Fijian brotherhood. Uh, added to that, there's a lot of players in in the bro environment who played with the boys up in, in Europe uh, through the Sevens Pathways uh, or under twenties or Fiji Warriors. Uh, so. You know, it was a, a prime time for them to actually get together again under one roof and, and this time flying the flag for Flying Fijians, you know, the biggest stage, Rugby World Cup. And on the philosophy of, uh, or the idea of Ubuntu, uh, I think uh, most people are still not familiar with that. If you could just tell us how that was introduced to, to the team. Mm. Ubuntu in the Fijian word is Ndovata. It means unity. It means... Uh, the biblical phrase I could think of that best describes Ubuntu is iron sharpening iron. So a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. I am good because of you. I am good because of the team and everyone around me. So it's really about everyone supporting each other hand in hand. Uh, it's an African word. Um, you know, and our head of performance, uh, David Sylvester, tweets, uh, a very lovable man in our environment. I was someone who actually, you know, um, I. Uh, you know, he, he introduced that word into the into the environment, uh, something that, you know, meant quite strongly as well um, for him in, in that experience. But that brought in to our environment, it was a word that we could, uh, we could reason with and, you know, apply it to our systems very quickly, something that we do anyway as, as a people. Every, every person behind that coaching panel had uh, the specific tasks or specific roles and for you it was um, fitness as a strength and conditioning coach. Mm. How challenging uh, was your work in terms of getting the players in shape for, for game day? Well, I wouldn't say, yeah, it has its own challenging uh, challenges, sorry, but I think the players did all the hard work, you know, the players did all the hard work and, and like I said, this is probably the only time uh, or well, the first time in our history where we've got a whole full squad of men who are all full-time professionals. Mm. So they come in ready, you know, physically. Obviously, you know, we had to take them to a place they have never been to, but, you know, they are paid to play the sport. So they are expected to be in good physical shape. Uh, so, you know, I found that part quite, um, I guess, less of a burden compared to previous and uh, and and the all the players were quite clear in their in their minds on what we wanted to achieve as a team and as a nation of Fiji uh, so with that you know they they are um, they are ready to take their minds and their bodies to a place that's quite uncomfortable and that's what preparation does you know so that you're able to perform 
and and all the coaches you know their own special capacity in their different roles you know that's that's um, that was the goal really to make sure that we we sharpen our tools in our different departments you know uh, to get our players ready for for what the competition would demand and bring and how satisfying is that from from your role to see the players uh, going beyond you know to reach maybe a certain target that you've set for them hmm. Yeah, like any coach, you know, you'll always feel satisfied, um, you know, to see your players grow. I think we, you know, there's, there's still to this day, you know, a few, a couple of weeks later, and I'm sure with the playing group it'll be more, but, you know, there's still that, that slight feeling of disappointment we didn't actually, you know, go a step further than, you know, what we had initially set up, but that's sport for you, you know, uh, that's what you learn from. Uh, the boys set themselves a quite uh, demanding target, uh, you know, and they tried their best and they worked as hard as they could. They can all be proud of what they put out there. And speaking of the boys, you know, you're closer to them. So maybe some of them have a sh sort of a strange pre-game or post-match uh, ritual uh, that you could share with us that you saw was quite unique. Yeah, I think pre-game routines is, is, is all different for different players and, and that's quite personal for them. You know, that's quite unique. They, they have their, how they prepare as professionals to go out there and perform. Uh, you know, whether it's listening to gospel music, whether it's writing down notes on their, their notebook, whether it's, you know, they go out for coffee to relax and chill, whether it's calling their families back home, uh, doing their own little prayers and things like that, you know. Uh, some go through just individual practice on a particular skill they want to do. So it's all different. But I think having said that, it's still a big work on area for all of our professional athletes. And I'm talking about, you know, now and for the future, uh, where each individual has their own individual routine and actually knowing what works for them, what brings the best out of them. Because you can always have a set routine, but it's never really worked well. So as a pro athlete, you want to know that, you know, what you're doing is actually getting you better. You know, what is benefiting yourself and also the team uh, to get the performance and the results. And speaking of the future, from uh, uh, what you've seen that we've achieved and the performance that uh, we've all seen in this Rugby World Cup, where do you see yourself, uh, sorry, where do you see the team in the next uh, four years in the global stage? Yeah, I think it's an exciting future for Fiji, eh? uh, God willing, I think what, what we've seen in this year. I'm going to say this, right? In 2023, and a lot of hard work has gone through to, to actually get us to where we are. But we are in transit and the future is waiting. So this year, Fijindra was able to, to win a number of games more than last year. And in that process, had wins over three former or three um, uh, super rugby champs. Two former champs in the Reds and the, and the Hurricanes. And, and a win over the current super rugby champs, seven time winner, the Crusaders. In the same year, Flying Fijians has beaten two Tier 1 nations in Australia and England. Both have won the Wear Valley's Trophy. That, if you really look closely at Fiji Rugby, and if you have been following the trends, where we've come from and where we are, those are five results that should tell you that we are on this path. So if you're asking about 2027, then what that has done in 2023 should give belief to the people but also confidence to the playing group and also to our pathways going underneath the Drua and the Flying Fijians that you know I'm, and I'm talking about coaches talking about players parents club coaches school teachers everyone that you know if we really align our processes and together with Fiji Rugby Union then we've got something really special because I can't think of any other tier two nation that has done that in one year and we're just talking from March to July so that's telling us a story, you know, and, and that should really uh, bring about a massive amount of positivity and belief uh, that we're heading in the right direction. We just got to work, keep working on what we need to uh, improve on. And taking all that into account and uh, the call from Pacific Island Brothers and of course from us to have more tests with the Tier 1 teams. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've just seen World Rugby release a rebranded Pacific Nations Cup mm -hmm. uh, format. Do you think um, this format will be good for the development of our players? 
because they're bringing in USA and Canada? Well, I think I'll leave that to the higher powers to talk about the competition formats. Eh? But for me, from a performance side, uh, something that's important is, you know, players players are paid to compete and to play. And, and, and the best competition is when you compete against the best. You can only get better playing the very, very best. And as often as you can. Uh, that's quite important. You know, to prepare yourself for Rugby World Cup, you need to be playing the best nations in the lead-up and not just World Cup here. But it's hard because you can't really control what you can't control. Uh, because you can't, you can't train a tier one game. You have to play a tier one game. Uh, that's just the principle of, of performance, uh, and, and you gotta you gotta be able to do that. Uh, but you know, I don't know. You know, but competition is competition. Uh, as long as we can get a lot of you know real good uh, competition against tier one nations, that'll be good. Uh, that's not to say that you know playing other nations is is is. is is not good but it's still good it's still allowing our players especially our younger ones to be exposed in an international environment what's a moment in this rugby world cup that you will forever take with you i think there's so many memories from this rugby world cup uh working with a very special group of players and coaches um i think um the game against the wallabies you know to defeat australia in a world cup never been done before so to you know to actually witness that uh, in my lifetime to actually see that you know something that I think you know is going to be remembered for a very long time and, and the players and their families can be really proud of what they were able to achieve out there just on uh, your role <coughs> SNC um, we know that not every player is gonna mm. don the national jersey one day uh, but there's also this route um, that you that you have right now. Uh, what would be your message or your advice to those players that that might not be able to make it but want to stay involved in the sport? Mm. Yeah, well, you know, it's um, there's only 33 places in a rugby World Cup squad. Eh? There's thousands of players in Fiji. You can't all wear that jersey. Um, but you know it's it's interesting because for me back as a player i i targeted 2003 rugby world cup uh and then you know you know it probably just not good enough <laughs> and, and back in 2007 still playing i i thought i was you know able to position myself to get an opportunity again not probably not good enough but you know i thought uh you know i can still contribute in rugby as a coach and then you know finding myself in this pathway I mean, God has a different plan for everyone. Uh, rugby certainly now, having gone professional, offers up you know different career opportunities. Uh, when I say that, you know, obviously you've got the coaching pathway, you've got a pathway as um, like a physiotherapist or a doctor or a performance analyst. You've got a pathway as a nutritionist. You know that will become a very important part of performance sport in Fiji. I'd like to think you've got sports psychology, you've got sports management. You've got sports tourism uh, all those kind of things uh, you know so you can still get involved and be involved in the in, in the sport uh, and not just performing on the stage yeah, if that makes sense so uh, I've been quite blessed to have come through that pathway is there anything else that you would like to add no I think uh, I said quite a lot I, I think you know, I just like to thank the people of Fiji everyone who has uh, supported the flying Fijians uh, and, and their families especially, you know, it was a, a real tough campaign and for the team to reach as far, I would like to thank everyone involved and all the sponsors, stakeholders, all the Banua as well for the support they gave the team. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Nada, for joining us. And that was uh, Mr. Nadada Wanimbuka, the strength and conditioning coach for the Fiji and Rua and uh, the flying Fijian. Thank you so much, sir, for your time. And join us again in our next show.